Hey guys, so what am I working on now? Well, I've got this Volkswagen Rutan, and it is a, what year is this thing? It is a 2010 Volkswagen Rutan with a four liter V6. Now, in case any of you are wondering, these are not Volkswagens. These are rebadged Dodge Grand Caravans. That's all they are, or Chrysler Town and Countries, whatever you want to call them. A lot of people think, oh, I got a Volkswagen. No, you got a Dodge Caravan. So, Volkswagens had some kind of a deal going on with Dodge, and they they bought these things and actually converted them to Volkswagen vehicles. Not quite sure how the whole process went, but everything about this thing is a Dodge Caravan, except the very nose and the tail lights. I think the quarter panels might be a little bit different, stuff like that, to fit Volkswagen's tail lights. Uh, the dash is pretty much the same, some slight differences, but it's pretty much the same to a um Chrysler Town and Country. But uh yeah, so anyway, so this one came in. This right here. And the complaint is they have to keep adding coolant. Alright. So I got a pressure gauge hooked up to this. Let's put this up in the air and take a look. Um, I see a couple of spots right there. That's forward enough to where I'm pretty confident it's gonna be a radiator. How do you pronounce it? Radiator? Radiator? I usually call it radiator. But whatever. All right, let me put this up in here. All right, so we're up in the air here. And you can see coolant there. You can see standing at the corner of the radiator right there. So I'm pretty confident it's the radiator. I mean, it may look like it's coming from the hose, but I'm pretty confident it's not going to be. It's probably from the seam where the aluminum meets the plastic tank. The aluminum core meets the plastic tank. I'd be almost willing to bet. So, how do you do one of these? Well, if you saw me, I actually did one on my own minivan. My 2008 Dodge Grand Caravan, which is the exact same vehicle. Step number one, take the nose off. Make your life that much easier. The nose does, is not that difficult to take off. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take this nose off. And you have a couple of screws. Oops, sorry. You have a couple of screws inside here. You have one up inside there. And do you have... Because I think this piece is actually missing on mine. Oh, Mary actually saw a drip. So I'm going to take those push pins out and stuff like that. And then there's clips and bolts up top. We're going to take all those out and we're going to take that nose piece off the actual bumper cover. Here's a pretty handy little tool if you don't have it. It's got a Phillips head for one side, for one um, fitting, and it has a flat head for the other fitting. And basically you just take it and you insert it in here. I'm trying to do this one handed, so please forgive me. And it's a one way clutch inside this. So if you flip it to the other side, it'll go the other way. But this is great for like taking screws out in tight spots. So now basically what you're gonna do with this, because this way you don't have to take the tire off. And see how it's got the one-way clutch. And like I said, if you flip it, you can go the other way to tighten it. Or if you got reversed threads for some weird reason. I'm sure they might probably make other ends. Like I'd be willing to bet you could probably get Torx ends and stuff like that. But this thing is phenomenal tool. Um, I don't remember where I got it. What I'm going to try to do is I'm going to see if I can't find it and add a link to this video for it. I don't know if you guys have noticed, I actually learned how to do that, so I've been doing that when I can. I'll add a link to stuff that I use. So, okay. So I got another screw there. That should be a 10 millimeter up top there, and then I got the stuff on the other side to do. So let me get all those out. I took the push pins out of the bottom there. Did that already. So let's get this all done. All right, so now I'm doing the other side. Now I said, you know, remove the tire. You may, this avoids doing that. Yeah, you can cut the tire, cut the wheel, you know, in or out or whatever, so you can get better access. But let's say you're in the rear where you can't do that. Well, then guess what? Instead of taking a tire off, use this. This tool works phenomenal. Like I said, I'm going to try to get put a link up if I can find it. I'm sure I could probably find something. If not, I'll put it in the description because some of those um, tags that I can do don't have product and if there's no product I can't put the tag but I can put a link up or something like that or a description of what the actual tool is 
So I'll try to do that. So I still got to get that one out. The top one there, that is just a 10 millimeter. So I got 10 on the end of my gun here. Stuff is a little rusty and that I should be able to get that out all right let me get the other screw out and then let's work our way to the top all right so up here we got these pins that we got to pull out I already pulled the one out that was right there but basically you just get a pry tool underneath it lift up the center and then it comes out like that pretty simple straightforward put it up there then there's a 10 here and a 10 here and I believe that's it and then this bumper cover should snap out all right, so a lot of times, you usually just pull out on the corners. If you notice, every time I start a new clip, which gets edited in, you can hear me say, all right, I don't know why, i got to try to get out of that habit. I realize I say it right after I say it. Maybe it's like a nervous reaction type thing. That's what I'm feels like there's another push pin on that side and not on this side. Oh uh, yeah, there is a shield on that side that's not on this side. So, I missed that. So let's back up in place with one screw to just keep it from falling because I don't want to, I don't want the nose to rip and I don't want to possibly damage it. Let's do that. Let's put it up in here and get that last push pin out. All right, so let's try that again. I took that one push clip out on that side. On the driver's side, it has a uh, like a splash shield that runs over and connects. Where on the other side, it doesn't probably because of the belts on that side. So it has a different design. It should come off. Now what I'll do is I'm going to actually lay this down somewhere where it doesn't lay on its face. You don't want to lay these things down on its face because you don't want to scratch it. So let me put this away. Now this thing comes out as a module assembly, if I'm not mistaken, but I think I can get around it. I, I, I can do it on my own van, but I might have changed up a couple of things to make it so I can do it on my own van. If I can't do it on this one, then so be it, then I got to take it out with the condenser too. Basically, you got screws here for the support. Got to take the hood release cable off, or no, actually, I think I might be able to take it and lay the thing across there. Got to be careful with the battery terminals. And... Just take those screws out there. This one, I believe, is for a mount for the radiator, so just got to be careful when it comes out. And then got to take the hoses, fan shroud, and all that other happiness off. The A lot of times, I won't drain the coolant until the bitter end. The reason being is I hate working on an engine while the coolant's dripping somewhere. Yes, this thing has a coolant leak, but I don't feel like having a waterfall or a cascade of coolant coming out and having to deal with that if I don't have to do it. Uh, let's see, anything else? The 4-liter Chrysler, not a huge fan of the motor. It's based on the 3.5. It's a single overhead cam. They're not known for any major problems. I'm just not a big fan of them. I think they're kind of over overcomplicated. Um, I mean, it's really just a single overhead cam motor, but I think that I just, I don't know, personal opinion, just not a huge fan. I would avoid buying one for myself. Uh, 3.8, I don't mind at all. Uh, 3.6, I think is a great motor too. It had a few issues with certain years, but I think it's a great motor also. Four liter, just not a huge fan of. So with the upper support out of the way, now this whole assembly moves. The top of the condenser, this is actually two pieces. You have a condenser and you have a transmission cooler. Say what? If you look, see how thick these veins are up here and all of a sudden they get thin down here. This top part where the thick is, that's a separate cooler here this is two pieces they don't intersect one another so that's a tranny cooler that's a condenser and like i said you're supposed to take this out as an assembly but i'm going to try to do it without taking it out as an assembly i'm going to take the fans off first take the bottle out take the fans out see if i can't do it that way but i'm going to probably have to start draining it now uh, anytime you take shields off like this air deflectors stuff like that make sure you put them back uh let's see because there's 
you see they got some on this side too. It does make a difference in the direction of air into the cooling system because I've seen people leave stuff like that out and all of a sudden the car starts running hotter or whatever. Uh, but yeah, let me see if I can't get the fan stuff out. Now I'm going to probably have to drain the coolant because I got to move this hose to get this bottle out if I'm not mistaken. <clears throat> now here's something I made a long time ago. This is just a piece of 3 8 tube to a 3 8 hose that I stick onto the nipple that comes out of the radiator because this way it helps guide it because otherwise you let that thing out and it just goes all over the place. When I'm done using it, I stick it on my screwdriver drawer in my toolbox. I always have it in the same place. I'm thinking I gotta go to the bathroom. Anyway, if you're ever working on one of these things and you gotta pull the transmission out or something like that on a Chrysler product that has this type of a cross member, never take this bolt out. You're gonna hate life if you do. This bolt has a tendency to snap up inside this cross member here, this, cro this front piece, almost every time they break. Take the mount bolts out, take the back bolts out over there, and this thing will rotate and swing. You can swing this thing all the way over to here, but never take this bolt out, because trust me, trust me, trust me, you're gonna be saying bad words. Uh, let's see, so what else? I'm gonna take this lower shield out because I have to take this out, and I'm not mistaken, this is the power steering cooler that attaches to the radiator. So if I take this lower shield out, which is part of this bumper cushion piece, and it's only held in with little push clips. I'm gonna take this out, gotta undo the um, ambient air temperature sensor, just get it out of the way. So this way I'm not, I don't have to worry about any of this. All right, so I got the bottle out of the way, the upper hose is out of the way. The bottle just pulls up. It's all, it just pulls up, comes right out. Um, I unplugged the resistor for the cooling fan and the cooling fan itself. It's just two plugs, that's all it is, no big deal. Then this thing has tabs here that you have to push inward, see that? So this way it ramps up and you can pull the shroud out. So now, I'm not sure, like I said, I may have to pull the whole thing this whole assembly out but let's prop you up here to see if this thing will come out or not the four liter is definitely much tighter than the 3.8 liter so now the way this is held together is these are like these push clips and they you gotta squeeze them and then the condenser will actually pop off of here it's kind of a pain to show you but that's how it works you squeeze this end and this piece will pop over see that oh there it goes but now you have to kind of take the condenser out and move it this way and drop it down move it towards the front of the vehicle drop it down so you can get the radiator to come out because the radiator actually sits inside two pockets so let me see if i can't get that done and get this thing out of there all right i took those cross braces out just to make make it easier for you guys to see this so basically after i did pinch that and pulled this outward see that pulled that outward that bottom there fits into a pocket so you have to get it up and out like that same on this side as you see i pinched those two got it out i got to try to get this out this can be a little bit tricky i remember i know on my van i struggle with this a little bit when i change the radiator like this side because of the ac lines i wind up if you saw that good i actually slide it out this way to get it actually to come out the reason for that is This side has these AC lines you gotta deal with. So now you gotta work around those. This one fits into a pocket right there that's in the radiator. So I may actually have to suck down the AC system to get this thing to clear. Cause that is definitely in a pocket right there. I don't know. Let's see. Yeah, I might have enough room. And hard to see. I'm sorry if I kept going off camera there. All right, so I got that stuff moved around. And I'm hoping 
This thing will come up now. I've had it where it, they actually got stuck in that rubber pocket that sits at the bottom. Because everything's loose over here. But, oh, there it goes. And of course, we don't really care about the old radiator. But I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this out. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be able to. I'm going to have to... Um, I'm going to have to recover the system. All right, let me recover because i got to undo those lines because what happens is those lines wrap around the tank like this and I just can't get enough room to clearance it. So, all right, let me put the AC machine on this thing and suck it down. AC is recovered. So now i got to undo these 13 millimeter bolts. Really just this one, this nut, to take this off the condenser so this way the condenser can come forward because this piece here wraps around the radiator see that so let me get that off of there and then hopefully that thing will come right out on my van it's a little bit different i don't know i might have bent it on my van to be totally honest with you uh, i wouldn't do that on the customer's car but it was my own car so i didn't care all right so let me take that off of there yeah just kick that no you're good okay like i said i recovered it put it into a vacuum too should hear a little pop, possibly. Yeah, okay. And now, you can see, everything separates much better now. Right okay. Yeah, the, um, this plastic shield is wrapped around the condenser now. And that should be, sorry about the headlight, it should do what I needed to do, and now it should come out. We have the bucket underneath it on this side. I don't think I showed you, but I have to take the hose off on the bottom, obviously. I've got to take the hose off. Alright. So now we pull that out of there. Plastic piece just fell off. I'm gonna put that back on. But let's see if we can actually see where the thing was leaking from. Of course, it's all wet now, but yeah, you can see the stains and stuff right there. It almost looks like the vein has rotted right there. That happens. Okay. So now, see, there's the rubber boots I was talking about that fit down in those pockets. So, oh, and also here, this is that cross member bolt. See that design right there? And you wonder why the thing breaks off. It's because it collects all the dirt and debris. That's supposed to be a threaded top of the bolt. See that? Now imagine you're trying to drag that through that encapsulated nut right there. Uh, yeah, you wind up breaking the bolt. So that's why I tell you, do not even attempt to try taking it out because you're going to be hating life if you do. <laughs> Trust me. There's the new radiator, there's the old one. I'm gonna transfer over those air deflectors. And as you can see, the new one actually comes with those rubber bushings that belong on the bottom there. That one stayed in place, uh, no, that one came out. This one stayed in place, I gotta dig that one out. Always make sure you check that when you're doing a radiator because if you forget, and let's say the new one comes with it and then you're fighting with it to try to get it in and all of a sudden you know you have one already in place you're, it's it just makes for a pain in the neck day the other thing i'm going to do too is that uh, oh i already took it off okay the squeezy clamp that goes on the hose right there i didn't remember that i took it off last night but i'm gonna i i left it off because it's in kind of a spot where it's a pain in the neck because it's close to the front support there so I'm just going to put a regular clamp on it, but I can worry about that when I go back together. So, all right, let me get those two deflectors installed on that one, and let's drop that in place. Uh, sorry about the little bit of noise you hear. We actually have a propane heater right there. It was cold. Woo, it was cold. It was like, uh, 
I think it was I think it was 30 when I left the house this morning, but the shop got real cold. Sometimes the shop gets super cold, don't know why, but it was super cold in the shop this morning. It was 40 in the shop when I got here. A little too cold. So um, yeah, let's get this going. These air deflectors go in pretty easy. It just has that little locking tab right there that holds it. Basically it just snaps right over top of that there and there. So relatively simple. So I'm going to drop it back in. I actually have to have my headlight on because I can't see the bottom of this thing. So hopefully the light doesn't reflect too bad. Eventually I'm going to be able to get lighting. I just don't have it as of yet. This can get a little tricky. Just got to be patient. You got to be careful. Also got to line up the bottom where those tabs, those mounts go in place. You have to line everything up. Sometimes you got to maneuver stuff around. Just to get it kind of where you need it. And a lot of times too, these air deflectors kind of get in the way. You really don't have a choice. You try to get them out later. Most of the time, so we're going to have to actually pull the other side of this here. What that was is the actual mounting bracket where I took the line off yesterday for the AC. Alright, so it's kind of going in place now. The mounting points are almost where they need to be. So, now, with the mounting points in the respective holes where they're supposed to be, now it's a matter of catching the condenser and stuff like that. You got to catch the bottom first and then get the top in place because they'll snap into those receivers. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to film that only because of my camera equipment and the fact that I'm going to be blocking everything with my body. So let me get that in place and I'll show you what it's like after. I wanted to show you this before I get it in its final position. I had to tuck this from this side to slide it in. And because otherwise it's just too difficult to get it up and over. Like I said, you'd have to take the condenser completely out, which at this point it probably wouldn't have been that difficult because they already had to discharge the system. But uh, it is what it is. All I would have had to do is take the other line off and just switch it over on the outside. Not a big deal though for me because I've already you know, I've gotten to this point. With that in place, it's basically just that. It snaps over and you see those two little locking tabs hold the condenser in place. That's it. That's all that's involved. Like I said, at that point, it really would have been easier just to take the condenser out. But then I would have had to deal with tranny cooler lines and make a mess from that. But whatever, it's in. So now, like I always say, reverse procedure to install. I'm not going to cover anything here unless something really interesting comes up. And again, just a reminder, do not take that bolt out for the front of the cross member. All right, let's get it done. One thing I did want to show you is how the fan is held in place. See these notches here? This thing snaps down and in place. At the bottom there is also the same thing, but the bottom doesn't lock, it just holds it. So you want to always make sure that you have the bottom in place. So this way, when you push that down, see how it goes in place like that? So now, okay, it's in place. Sometimes this stupid tab on these things doesn't come all the way out because it is an aftermarket radiator. <clears throat> but it's pretty much locked in place. It's not gonna come up and out of there. Uh, so from there, just hook up the wiring. One other thing I wanted to show you is when you're reusing these types of clamps, try to put them, see the witness mark there? Try to get it to line right up to the old witness mark. And there's different, definitely spots where you can see exactly how it was sitting before. And the reason for that is because the hose already has 
kind of like set in place. It's got mark. Uh, it's been formed to that kind of a position. Sometimes if you set it up and you're actually off of that, I've actually seen it create a leak. So try to set it up exactly the way it came off. I have no problem using this clamp up here. The clamp feels perfect and it's not stretched or anything, so no issues there. Um, if I even had any thought that it might not be, then I would put a regular clamp on it. This power steering cooler line is pretty much the same way. It just kind of sits in there. Yes, it has a loose fit, but it's just how it is. Those little tabs snap over and lock it in place, but it's not gonna go anywhere. Yes, it does have a loose fit, like I said. Uh, so next step, you see, oh, as you see, those side shields are in place, those air deflectors. So just, like I said, make sure you put them back. Uh, sometimes you can't, I get it, but if you can put them back, put them back. It does make a difference. It helps direct the airflow directly through the uh, radiator itself, radiator condenser assembly. Plus, you have, sometimes you have other coolers on here. Some people may say, well, how does that work? That's a flat area. Well, it stops the air here, so naturally the air is gonna go here. That's all. Uh, all right, let's put this lower piece on and keep going. Now, this piece is pretty simple. It's just laid in place. And then you use those push pins. Just make sure you don't catch the um, ambient air temperature sensor like behind it or anything like that. Uh, and basically it is just push pins. Now honestly, let's see if this thing's got this foam pad here, there's another one that goes on top. I don't think that's factory. I think somebody might have installed that at one point. Might have had some kind of a rattle, possibly. Somebody thought that that would be a fix. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't, but we're going to put it back in just to be on the safe side. And this harness is technically supposed to go in there. And this goes in here. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. Here. All right, that's all nice and nice. And there's, like I said, there was another piece that just uh, that was there. And I, like I said, I'm pretty darn confident that this is not factory. I think this is. Uh, I think somebody added this to this. I'm not quite sure how it went. I'm thinking like that. Kind of matches the contour a little bit. Uh, it'll stay in place once it's sandwiched in there. Uh, all right, yep. just wanted to show you that. One thing you want to be mindful of too, whenever you get a, a replacement radiator, make sure the clips are in place before you start putting everything together. I didn't mention that before. But the other thing too is, if you look, this upper mount, see this? It's got this guide hole here and that's where the bolt goes through. There's a radiator support that's going to go back in, but it's got the bolt hole here and the guide hole there. It's backwards. Now, it's stuff you got to pay attention to because that will drive you insane when you're trying to assemble something and then you realize it's in backwards or whatever. They don't know when they assemble the radiator, just, they just know it's supposed to be with the radiator. So, simple enough, actually, is the bracket, oops. The rubber actually locks into that retaining groove there. So it's easier to do that. Oh, and also, see that little notch right there? The hood release cable goes through it. So that's why you just, that locks it in place so it's not dangling all over the place. All right, let's get that in place. All right, looking good, looking good. And I'm sure you've all done it too. Forgot to put that air deflector in place. It goes right underneath here. So, I'm gonna take those pens out and stick that back in place. And there it is where it's supposed to be, in place. We've all made that mistake. Mistakes happen, what are you gonna do? If you forget to put something in, take it apart and put stuff back in. That's why I try to put stuff in order, like lay it out in order so I don't forget. I just happen to overlook it. Whatever, no big deal. So, let's go back together. And the reason I just showed you that is because I guarantee you, if I didn't show you that, somebody would comment, oh, you didn't bother putting that back in. It happens. But anyway, there it is. It's in. 
we're going back together. All right, let's get the bumper cover back on. Now, as you see here, I put a piece of black duct tape on that to hold that in place. If you're ever taking a car apart and you see masking tape holding those bumper cushions in place, you know the car has been in a body shop right now. Most body shops will just use their um, uh, masking tape to hold those in place. I don't like using it because it's paper tape and a lot of times you can see it. So uh, the two screws I put in here actually don't belong there. So let me take those out. They don't belong there yet, I should say. Oh, no, wait. No, I was wrong. I was wrong. I, I'm, I'm not being smart there. Those do belong there. It's up here where they go. So, what you could do is just stick it in a place like that. Line the bolt holes up. Don't tighten anything up. Just catch the bolts in place. Alright, so now everything's in place and everything is secure for now. So, what we're going to do is we're going to put it up, we're going to catch the corners of the bumper. Alright, so now what you need to do is the bumper cover has, I don't know if you can see that, but it has little edges that fit into the edge of this. So, what you got to do is pay attention, like this actually wraps around slightly over the top edge. So, you want to catch that first and then catch the other ends that go underneath the headlight. And a lot of times you do have to palm it or use your fist like this. I just dropped a clip, which is no big deal. I can get it caught later on. And then you have the inner fender shield or a splash shield, whatever you want to call it, water shield. You still got to put that in place. Um, it tucks behind the bumper cover and then the screws go in it that I showed you in the very beginning. All right, so let's do that. Let's get the rest of this caught. And there we go. Everything's all together. Just got to tighten up those two bolts that I left loose. Put these push pins in right here. And then we got to fill it with antifreeze, charge the AC, and we're all done. Recheck it for leaks. Always recheck for leaks, just to make sure. Uh, but yeah, I'm not going to go through all of that, showing you filling it with coolant and whatnot. Just basically fill it with coolant. Uh, this system, I do not believe, has a bleeder. Maybe it does. Hold on. Oh, yes, it does, actually. Okay. Hold on. Let me show you. You can see it back there off the housing. See it right there? And you're going to access that through the back here, and you can get right on it. So, that, that's to help bleed the air out of the system. So... Let me fill this thing up. Let's get it recharged. Let me start it up. And always make sure your fans work, too. Uh, this way, just in case you uh, had an issue with the connection, stuff like that, you know you know about it right now. Mm, yeah, so let's tighten up those bolts, get it filled up. Let's go. Coolant should be full. I'm, I'm going to leave the jar on there, the uh, funnel on there, rather, while I run it. Just to make sure there might be a couple of air bubbles stuck somewhere. So I just want to make sure they come out. Uh, I got the AC recharged. I'm going to turn the AC on so this way it sucks out the low side line and we're going to go from there. So let's start it up. I find it kind of funny how Volkswagen put their emblem even on the key fob. It's a Chrysler key fob. AC is on. Okay. Because low side will suck down the hose. Woo, a little smoky. That's a, um, that's a four liter trait right there. Like I said, I've never been a huge fan of these engines. I've seen some go some, I've seen some go 300,000 miles, but eh, just never been a fan. All right, so I'm gonna leave it run. Low pressure is a touch high. I don't have the high pressure hooked up because it's underneath the air cleaner and that's a little bit of a pain to get to. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna just disconnect that and clear out the machine. 
let this thing run for a little while. I'm going to make the, sure the fans come on, and then we're going to button it up. So it's burped out. I shut it down, and I'm going to take it for a short little road test. This thing don't sound too healthy. I'm not very thrilled about the way it sounds. So I'm only going to take it on a short little road test. I usually like to go on a nice, decent road test with things, but I'm not going to with this one. Uh, I'm going to let it sit for a little while because what will happen is it will cool down and it will suck this remainder into the radiator. Uh, if it doesn't within the next 10 minutes, then all I'm going to do is just put a, the cap. There's like a stopper that goes in there and then just transfer it over to the overflow. Uh, but yeah, all right, let's do that. All right, so I just went on a road test. Everything seems fine. Uh, like I said, I, I got a funny feeling the engine ain't going to last too long in this vehicle. I just don't like how it sounds doesn't sound smooth in all honesty so all I could do is tell the customer um, but yeah it just it does it just it sounds clattery I guess is the best way I can describe it like uh, it's got too much bearing clearance stuff like that you can hear the lifters making a little bit of noise when you first start it I swear you can hear the rods making a little bit of noise I just went around the block real quick, you know, not quick, <laughs> I just, I babied it around the block, but I just, I don't see it lasting. But anyway, uh, yeah, so, hopefully you got something out of that. If you did, hit that like button. If you could, please subscribe. Alright guys, have a great day. Keep wrenching.